Hi everyone. So in this video, I want to talk about a couple of methods by which we might attach things to uh, two shafts. Uh, those are the two things I want to talk about are keys and pins. So keys are probably the most common um, method by which we might attach something uh, to a shaft. And typically, just kind of giving a, a crude, uh, let's try to draw this a little better, a crude drawing of this. If I have a shaft and it has a keyway cut into it, so just kind of looking at it from an end view, and then around that I have something else, which itself has a keyway cut into it, and assuming this is, you know, well fit here, we have this, this space now. And this space is, is where we would place the key. And the key is really just a, a you know, rectangular um, piece of material that we fit into this slot here. And we assume that the key is well-sized and the, and the keyway is, is um, sized appropriately such that we have a tight fit. And you know, the, the key isn't getting turned um, kind of diagonally across that space at all as um, as the torque, you know, and rotation is applied to the shaft. So we're going to as assume that that's a tight fit. Now, generally, uh, the key is going to be one quarter uh, in width of the shaft of the diameter. So uh, the width of the key here is going to be d over 4. And then, and it's not drawn very well to scale on my, my picture here, but the height within the shaft of that keyway is going to be d over 8 and so one half of that width. Now one of the things we may want to know then is you know how to appropriately design our key to be able to carry the torques that we are expecting it to to have to carry. So there's a few things to think about. One we have the shaft itself and its limiting torque so what sort of uh, torque it's designed to carry and we know from previous analysis that we can write shaft torque as pi d cubed by 16. And we're going to assume that our, our limit is 0 0.58 sy. So we're assuming that our shear yield is 0 0.58 sy <clears throat> and plugging that in. So this is we'll say more or less our limiting torque uh, for, our, um, for our shaft itself. Now we need to think then about the key. And the key in theory can fail in a couple of different ways. It can fail by compression in that, you know, we're applying a load. Um, let's get a different color here. We're applying a load to the key uh, do the torque of a shaft in one direction, and then of course an equal and opposite uh, force there. And those are more or less uh, in line with each other. And therefore it can fail by compression. Uh, but of course, you know, really it's loaded in shear in this case, at least the, the, the loads aren't perfectly aligned, they're slightly offset, which means that we can fail in, in shear as well. So we want to check both conditions. So under compression, we can take our torque uh, that's applied to our shaft, and basically we're going to um, represent that as uh, a load. And in compression, it would fail under, under yield stress rather than shear yield. And we're going to apply it to an area which our area in this case is going to be um, equal to the length of our key. So whatever that length of the key is, which you know we haven't designed, um, by d over eight. So it's a side facing area of one half of the key. So we have L d by eight as our area that we're applying this force to. And our torque is equal to 
uh, force times one radius. So the torque out at the, the plate, the location of the key is basically the force by one radius. So we need to factor that in there as well. And this gives us a result <clears throat> of SY LD squared over 16 as our limiting torque. We also need to look at the key in terms of shear failure to see if that uh, changes anything. So we can do basically the same sort of analysis and say that our limiting torque is now in shear failure, so 0.58 SY times um, the area over the shear. Now in, in when we shear, the area we're looking at is the cross-sectional area. So in this case, it's a, like a top-down view of the key, and it's that area, which, in, which would be then L D over four rather than over eight. And our torque is also at the same distance of one radius, so D over two. So if we, if we write this out, we get 0 0.58 SY LD squared over eight. Now, what we can do then, because ultimately we're trying to design the key, and if we want to design the key, uh, or at least a limiting torque load for the key, we can say, well, we want the key to fail effectively at the same time that the shaft does. Now, really that's not our goal typically in the end, but just it's a good starting point. So we can say, from this analysis that we've just performed, if we take the shaft torque and set it equal to the key torque, say in compression, we can then solve for L in terms of D. So if we do that uh, by compression, we end up with L equals 1.82 D. If we do the same thing, but now with shear, take the shaft torque, uh, shaft, yeah, shaft torque, um, set it equal to the key shear failing torque, we get L equals 1.57 D. So what this basically says is that if we want the key to fail at the same time as the shaft, then it needs to be equal to 1.82 times the shaft diameter for uh, the compression case and 1.57 times the diameter for the shear case. So we can actually see that the compression is a little bit more conservative because it's prescribing a longer key uh, than in the shear case. Now, in reality, when we design a key, really we're looking at, um, we want the key to fail first, typically. Uh, the idea being that, you know, our shaft is more expensive to replace uh, and the components on it are more expensive to replace. We'd rather replace the key if something goes wrong and only the key. So usually we would design the key to be a little bit undersized uh, such that it fails first before anything else would have the potential, uh, such as the shaft, to, to shear off. So um, typically we're going to do that. Now... The one other thing to keep in mind is that in this assumption, by specifying the shaft torque as we did up here based on the diameter, we're assuming that the shaft itself was designed to be an appropriate diameter for um, shear failure. However, the shaft may not be designed for stress. It may de be designed for deflection. So maybe there's a deflection requirement on the shaft, which um, made it smaller or larger, probably larger, um, that is being taken into account. So in that case, that might mean that this torque based on this diameter is not relevant because uh, the, the shaft strength is um, not designed for you know that possible failure condition. So it's just something to keep in mind. Now, with the one thing we have to be careful about is we haven't really taken into account any stress concentration due to the key way that's been cut um, into our shaft. <clears throat> so uh, there's a nice diagram from the book which uh, talks about this. So in a, in a uh, runner style keyway, which you know is, is you can imagine being cut by a horizontal mill, 
Um, we have that uh, situation on the left hand side here and a profiled keyway being cut you know, by a vertical mill, we have a slightly different key shape uh, and, and therefore different stress concentrations uh, corresponding to that. So down here, we can see some, some ranges of stress concentrations depending on the scenario that we're talking about, anything from 1.3 up to 2.0. So this is a stress concentration introduced to the shaft by that cutting of the keyway. And it's, it's just something to keep in mind um, that we would probably want to factor that in as well when we go ahead and, and design our shaft and uh, specify the stress of the shaft. All right, one additional thing I want to mention is pins as another really common um, method of attaching things to a shaft. And so briefly, if we have a component mounted to a shaft, uh, a pin uh, typically involves drilling a hole through our two things together and then pushing or press fitting a pin, a thin, small um, pin, which can be either solid or hollow, into that, uh, into that hole such that it passes through both components. So we can specify the pin has a, a small diameter of D and then specify our shaft diameter of capital D. And in this case, uh, assuming, you know, we have a solid pin and that's, uh, of course we might have a hollow one but, and we can represent that, but I'm just gonna, for illustration, say that we have a solid pin. We can calculate the shear uh, capacity in terms of torque of that pin using an equation that looks like this, where basically we're saying we have a solid rod, it's in double shear um, because the torque is being applied over two cross-sectional areas, one at the top of the shaft and one at the bottom of the shaft. And therefore we get a torque um, capacity of this device that looks like this. Um, so it's kind of the same sort of basic principle as we saw with the keys, we can figure out what the torque capacity uh, torque carrying capacity is of that pin uh, and then do something with that in terms of design. All right, I'm going to stop there. Thanks.